Hey, hey, hey. Thanks for stopping by. Looks like we're doing okay. And uh, we're going to take a look at a couple new ones that I've been uh, had my eye on for a while. This ought to be really fun, hopefully. And we'll wait a couple minutes for uh, some people to, there we go, some people to come on from the uh, Scotch for Dummies uh, show is another good one as usual. I was cracking up most of the time, pretty much the whole time. It's funny to see what everyone's into. And we were talking about the um, our favorite three distilleries. And it's, it's tough, man. I, if I had to narrow it to three, I think Ardbeg and Lafroy would definitely be the top one and two. And my third, I was debating. It's like Lagavulin's great. The only bad thing about Lagavulin, not really bad, because they're consistently great, but they don't really take a lot of chances. They have their eight, they have their 12 cat strength, which is yearly. They have their uh, 16, of course, and their Distiller's Edition, which is the PX uh, influenced uh, same 16 year old, um, I believe. And um, they're all four are great. And uh, I did pick up, you can't see it over there, but I've got an 18 for shill from this year, an 18 year old lug of one. I cannot wait to taste that. That's going to be absolutely wonderful. Uh, definitely looking forward to it. It's on the, uh, it's been on the to do list for a while, but it's going to be saved for a special occasion. Hey, Louise. Uh, hey, uh, Loch Ness and Moose. Good. Uh, thanks for stopping by. Yeah, we're going to get into a, a really tasty one. I have a feeling. Haven't had this before. I haven't had this puppy either. The new, uh, Kilhome and the Sauternes cast matured. Sadly, I had a friend, my, my good friend, Mr. Lee G. He, uh, he recently reviewed the Kilhome and Port cast uh, release. He was not a fan. I have not tried it. I do have a sample of it. We will be doing that one maybe next time, uh, possibly. But um, he was a bit disappointed by it. And um, port casts are tough. I mean, port casts have to be done and almost a perfect way for it to make sense with peated scotch. I'm not sure why that is. I think it's the hardest thing for a distillery to get right. Um, the Springbank port cask I had, uh, the 19 year old, it was good. Was it my favorite Springbank out of all of them? No, I actually like the 12 Burgundy, uh, I think a little more and, um, and some other ones too. So, uh, and the 10 and the, the 12 cast strength are go-tos. So, um, it's just hard to really pull off a port cask uh, whiskey, in my opinion. Hey, Drew, thanks for stopping by. And CB, uh, sorry, CR and uh, Jason. The, uh, we're going to take a look at the also. Now, I've had a Lechig. It's pronounced Lechig, L-E-D-A-I-G. I've also had the uh, 10, which is uh, rarely available in the East Coast of the United States. It's harder to find the farther west you go for some reason. I know a lot of my Canadian friends, especially uh, Food Quick up in uh, near Victoria, Canada, has a hell of a time finding a leche. I have no idea why, other than I think the importers for them are probably based out of New York versus a lot of the ones that come from California. Now, some of the things that he can find a lot easier than I can are the ones that are imported into California, which is actually a, a boatload. It's, it's uh, amazing how certain distilleries are just easier to find on one coast versus the other, just the way it goes. This is supposedly a limited release. Um, it's an 18-year-old Lechegue. Um, I have seen this um, at the place I go to. They actually had another bottle, at least if not more, up there. Um, this one goes for about 150. This one goes for about 110, closer to 100. This one's a little more definitely special, I'd say. And I thought, well, you know what the hell? I, I can't pass up a good review on something as special as that. You don't see a Leche 18. Often, but it is it is definitely something readily available online or you know in a specialty scotch market. Uh, same with the Kilholm and Sauternes cask. This will be my fifth uh, of the series, as you can see back there. I've done the original cask strength, the red wine cask matured, the Seneg, and the Lot Gorm. So this will be fun to get into. Um, my favorite out of the four is probably the red wine cask matured. I really like that one a lot. Um, second place is probably the original cast strength. It's it's really damn well done. I mean, I wouldn't change. It's a four point seven five. The only thing that would make it better is age. And Kilhoma just needs to, you know, 
stick around and, and produce some whiskey for the next 10, 20 years. And I guarantee you it's going to be phenomenal. I can't wait till Ardenaho and Gartbrett get their stuff together on ILA. Those are the two newest ILA distilleries that are pumping out some stuff. And Diageo is supposedly doing some stuff with uh, Brora and uh, Rosebank. I don't think Rosebank is ILA. I can't remember where those guys from front are from, but the Brora stuff or the Port Ellen stuff will be interesting to see if they do like a, uh, another release of that. But we have to wait many years, unfortunately, for that. But Longhorn's probably a, a third. And the Snake, even though the Snake is really good, it's, it's still my fourth, I'd say. Hopefully this will be – I'm thinking it's going to be in the middle. I do like a Sauternes cask. I've had it with the um, – the Glen Morangy Nectar Dewar, which uh, is also a song turns cask, and I did like that one. Um, at first, I wasn't sh too sure about it. First sip, it kind of threw me off. And the more I drank it, the more I was into it. So that does happen from time to time, thankfully, with some of these. Hey, good to see you, Bobby. Um, I've yet to see a Kilhoman in the wild here in my area. I ordered a few online, though. Yeah, and it's worth. It's definitely worth the... Uh, the order and the risk, I think. Uh, the port wine, the newest port um, cast that they offer is the only one I've ever heard of a negative review on. So that should tell you something. Um, Louise actually asked, uh, what is the ABV of the original cast strength? Uh, that guy, let me see. Let me see if I can find out for you. I don't want to tell you the wrong thing. It was uh, distilled in 2010, bottled in 2016. It's 56.9, 56.9. So that's a that's a hefty one there. Sorry, let me get my chair back where I'm supposed to be. Uh, anyway, uh, Loch Ness says he just opened his kill home in Mock Bay last night. So far, so good. Yeah, Mock Bay is a definite go-to. It's a like a Chig Tin. I would say the closest probably thing to that. The only Kilhoma I didn't get into personally is the Isla, 100% Isla. Um, it's a little floral herbal for me. I'm not into the herbal floral peaty stuff. I love the peat. I love the smoke. But I lean more towards the sweet slash um, savory slash, um, I'd say, uh, I don't even mind some bitterness as long as it's balanced. But the, the overly floral herbal stuff just throws me off. It's not my, my cup of tea. Moose says he loves the Lechik 10. They'll be hunting for the 18. Yeah, it is pretty high. It's a uh, it's it's a good uh, it's a good mouthful that to kill him in the original cast drink. 2016 bottling. Make sure it's 2016. The earlier one is not as good. It's not good. I've heard negative reviews on that guy specifically. It was from 20. I want to say 2012. It could be off. Let me take a look for you just to make sure I don't give you the wrong thing. Uh, I'm going back. All this is off of memory, so you know how that goes when you've had over 200 different drams of of uh, whiskey. But let me look up that Kilhoman uh, original cask. And I, yeah, 2014 is the one you want to stay away from. 2016 is good to go, and that's going to be the color of the 2016, like a greenish color. If it's, um, I'm trying to remember the color of that original 2014. I'm, I think it might be different but don't quote me on it they don't really have a good picture i don't think of that guy but it just make sure it'll it'll say on the on the box what year it's from so just make sure it's 2016 not 2014 if you can help it um you know it, it is is it bad I, I don't think it would be bad i don't think it'll be as good maybe it's a 2016 release for some reason it's probably just the the make uh, of what they got but Anyway, let's go back to this guy. I was debating on which one to do first because they're both peated, which, you know, I'm just going to have to cleanse the palate between hand. I've got some um, original Pringles that are just straight, you know, salted, uh, thin potato chips that have no really flavor to them. So I'm thinking that might be a good uh, in-between cleanser. And uh, I don't think either one is going to supposedly overpower the other one, but... Um, I don't know. I think I probably should give respect to the 18 first to make sure I'm getting all the notes just in case that Sauternes, you know, newer. The younger the peat, the stronger the peat usually is. So that's my, you know, thought process on how you would do something like this. Uh, hey, Tom, thanks for coming back. Bye. I was wondering where you were. <laughs> 
Uh, we're going to find out Travis on the soft turns. We're going to do that second. We're going to start off with the Lechegui team. I have heard great things about this. I've never had it. It's got a really nice color. It's um, deeper than a, a gold. I would say this is more towards a um, deep red orange color. Kind of like a, I don't know. Like a, you, you can see it. <laughs> it's a... I think it's, I'm, I'm pretty sure this is going to be natural coloring. I, I was surprised with Tol Tolbermory is the uh, distillery. That's the regular name. Their pita stuff is Leche. And um, this is finished in Oloroso sherry casks and bottled without chill filtering. I really doubt that they would touch this with color. For an 18, it does not look suspect. It looks like it would be legit. And um, especially with the sherry influence, it's 46.3%. 18 years old, of course, and it's the next year. We already talked about the Loroso. Um, and it's dried with peat. Should be interesting. This is uh, the work of master distiller Ian McMillan, in, who in 1996 sought to create the, or recreate the original intensely peated Herabedian style once made there before the distillery was revamped in 1990s. Uh, the water comes from Torbomori's private source, which is mixed with the peat dried barley and matured in oak. Then it's finished in the Loroso afterward. Um, so it's it's definitely had its uh, a journey, we'll say. Oh wow. That's nice, man. That is that is that it's great to me because you can you can smell that age in it. And that's one thing that I've learned to respect about these older um, bottlings even if it's peated um you can detect that antique store it's like it's got this classiness about it it's got the that that musty musky man you can't recreate that you have to have the age to get that and that's definitely with the 18 here you definitely get sherry right off the bat thankfully and as well equal you get some peaty smoke there as well, which I'm, I'm totally attuned with. It's balanced. It's not one, you know, way too much sherry versus way too much pea forward. And I think the age really helps with, with that on this one. I definitely get some ruby red fruit in there right away. And some barbecue, some meaty savory notes. Well, it, it's funny because, I mean, I already, you know, you like the Leche 10. The nose is, you know, pretty, pretty damn nice on its own. But after you give it a little sherry love and you give it a little age love, damn. <laughs> That's all I can say. I'm going to have a 7th edition kill home in a sip along. Oh, thanks, Wine, uh, Wine Light Media. Good to see you, man. I haven't had the 7th edition. I don't think I have any of the editions yet. Uh, I have seen like a 2009 vintage. I'm trying to remember about the edition things, though. I think I have seen that around. I had to get my hands on one of those. Uh, Thomas Hart's heading to Lake Tahoe. Never been to Cali before. But good luck, uh, Tom R. Hopefully, uh, you'll be uh, able to uh, have a fun trip. I've been out to San Francisco and um, up to Seattle. Never really in the middle. I, I, I'd love to go to Colorado. That would be a dream trip. But uh, Cali's pretty cool. I mean, it's all right. I'm more of an East Coast kind of guy. I don't like a lot of nonsense. I'm pretty much, you know, I work for the government. So you know how it goes. It, it's it, it's a whole different mentality, especially with, with regard to work, West Coast versus East Coast. So I'm more practical pragmatic non-nonsense kind of you know get her done that's my motto just get her done <laughs> oh my and, and there is some i mean there's some slight floral properties that get in there but it's to me thankfully it's subtle enough where it's not pushing my pee out of the way or my smoke or my sherry goodness and my fruit sweetness, it's 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 all there. Some and, and the, thankfully the floral notes are more of like your um, not your uh, yellow white flowers. It's more of your deep red, like intense florals. 
it kind of reminds me of the nose of an art big grooves in a way it has that kind of without the charred maybe factor peat smoke's still there but it's not like a charred kind of a smoke it's more of a light um i'm not sure if i'm gonna go kalila yet type smoke we'll we'll have to taste first to see if if if, if that's what i'm getting because the kalila smoke is such a, a, a specific taste that you can't really you know it, it it's it's there you'll know what it what it tastes like right away kind of thing hey ryan thanks for coming by man mm. Mm-hmm. Wow. Okay. I'm going to eat on this, guys. It's 46.3. It's hard to touch that with anything. And it doesn't really need anything. I mean, I might give it a couple of drops just to see if it does anything with it, but it's well balanced. Wow. Really nice uh, finish on the end, too. Some, like, tropical notes. Pineapple. A little coconut. Hmm. It's complex. Still got the barbecue going. Let's see how long it lasts. Hopefully it doesn't like dry out and dissipate too much. It's still there. I have to have a little sip to just to reinforce it. Is Lee Barrier stopping you from adding water? <laughs> no. He knows how I feel about it. I mean, I, I told him, you know, I think you'd find a lot more um enjoyment out of a dram you don't have to do you know spoonfuls you just get your dropper and put literally like a couple of drops just to get the molecules flowing and, and you know that's all you got to do it's it's not a rocket science um i think it does help a little bit with uh, opening up certain flavors or maybe masking ones that you're not really down with if you have a sip of something that's got like a mineral note to it or some sort of a uh, floral note that's in your face and you're kind of like god i wish this would go away a little bit and bring some fruit out or bring some smoke back out or tame something else it does have that ability to do it if you you know start out really small you can always add more, but you can never take it away. So I always go with the mindset that, you know, one drop will do you and, and take it from there. <laughs> That's right, Tom, it's basic chemistry. And um, it's a good taste. It's, it's definitely more smoke. The chocolate comes through. Really nice, smooth between like a dark and a milk chocolate not overly bitter not overly sweet milky it's kind of like a good middle of the road when it comes to the the chocolate balance of the bitter and sweet deal um i wish it was a little maybe a little more fruit on the taste the palate i mean the the the, the nose has it has fruit all day it's amazing the palate brings more of the briny Isla, peat smoke, chocolate, savory, almost like a gravy kind of a deal. I'm not bitching, that's for sure. I, I have little negative things to say about this, I have to say. Um, Wine Life says Kilhoma has such a nice, clean, but rich smoke to it. Great stuff. Yeah. Oh, Moose, yeah, better than a 10. I, I have to say by far. I mean, it, I, I do respect the 10. And just like I respect the Ardbeg 10, I respect the, the Lafroy 10, um, you know, Benohaven 12, all the all the basic core juices with exception of Glenmorangie. I hate the Glenmorangie 10. I like all their other stuff pretty much to a point, but I can't stand their core juice. But all the Isla core stuff, and, and I guess the Chegg would be more of a an island. It's more of like a kind of like a Talisker hybrid where – it's got the pea in the smoke, but it's not an actual Isla, but it might as well be because it's in the same kind of family. Um, where was it going with this? <laughs> you know what I'm getting at. The the the, the Lechegue 18 is just, it's like comparing the, um, let me think of a good comparison, like the, the Ardbeg 10 with the Ardbeg Dark Cove, or it's like comparing the Lafroy 
with the Aquamore or the PX cask or the Madeira carriages, it's like you start off with a good baseline and then you're then you get up here. But that's the the, the problem with the two is the cost difference. Uh, the the Lechek 10 is probably a lot. I mean, it's probably half the price. Let me see something here. Just out of curious, uh, Wine Searcher is a really good, uh, it's wine-searcher.com is a really good place to find prices across the board for different things if you're looking. Let's just go with Lechek uh, 10, I'm sorry. Let's see. Um, not, they start off with samples. You got to watch the samples, the four and five dollar stuff, of course, are samples. The cheapest bottle of 10 is in, in Britain, of course, 4120. Uh, that would be pounds, I'm sure. Now, what's actually, I think, in dollars? Let me see something. Let's see if we let's just switch. You can actually switch it and go um, instead of all countries, just pick USA and do a search. And it should bring me down 65.99. Uh, total wine in uh, Maryland, and there's one also in, oh, there's two in Maryland, one for $65.99, one for $67.99, so there you go. And this one would be around $150, so you're talking, you know, uh, more than double the price, so it's it's kind of, you know, is it worth it? Yes, it's a damn good bottle. It, would I go out and buy it every day? There's no way I could afford it. So it's kind of one of those, you know, you got to kind of save up and, and definitely it's worth the save for a month or whatever it takes for you to get it and, and sip it, you know, once in a blue moon. I mean, it's one of those that I'm not going to be itching to drink very fast, that's for sure. But, but you better believe if my friend comes up and, and – that's a scotch drinker that wants to visit. And I'm thinking, what kind of good stuff could I offer this guy? It'll be definitely one of those that I'll pop, have to pop out and he'll, I'm sure he'll be pleasantly surprised by it. Um, let's see. Jason says, uh, was on the first class trip in America a month back and they had a Woodford and Glenn lived at 12 now. It could be, so it could have been worse. Yeah. It's hard to find a good, uh, um, on an airplane, a good scotch uh, at all. I mean, if you can get a Glenlivet, that's a miracle because every time I've gone, it's either Dewar's or JB, um, Chivas Regal, that kind of, you know, the blended stuff. You can't get a single malt, I guess, unless you're on like first class or something. Oh, that was even on first class. Wow. I'm surprised that they don't have like Glendronic and a Benrick and a freaking Tomatin at least or something. I mean, my God. <laughs> If you're paying, I mean, because first class nowadays is some crazy money to fly. We're talking seven, eight hundred, nine hundred dollars for a trip if you're going even like just a few states over. So, I mean, my God, at least you can do is give you a freaking, you know, twenty dollar glass of of scotch for God's sake. Especially if they're gonna make you drink it with ice or something crazy like that. <laughs> Tom Morris says he's fond American, so that sounds promising. Yeah, they only had the Glen on the way back, but the flights got had the Woodland. Oh, with the Woodford, yeah, yeah. I don't know between the Woodford and the Glenlivet. I think I rather had the Glenlivet. <laughs> I think bigger seats the first class. Me too. Hey, you can see I'm no, uh, I'm no Barbie doll, <laughs> and I'm six foot three. So that really, like, you know, it's it's bad, man. So, being six foot three, weigh about two eighty, two ninety. It's it's not the best thing in the world. <laughs> Oh, let's go back to this, this, uh, let's say, wow. I thought I would send food quick a sample of this so fast as head was spin if I didn't have to worry about customs for God's sakes. That's, that's the thing. It's like the, the customs and the shipping and all that, man, it's such a pain in the ass. It's just a shame because people miss out on such great freaking whiskey. If 150 is not out of your wheelhouse, if it's not, you know, if it's not just crazy money, if you get it within a month or two, I say go for it. It's got the maritime notes. It's got the peat smoke. It's got the sweetness. It's got the savory notes. It's balanced well. It's got the age. Even if they charge 200 for this, I think it would be really, like, close to being worth it. I really do. Um, don't tell them I say that because they'll probably raise the price. But um, I haven't. It, it's funny. I'm trying to think if I had any Tobermory like regular stuff. 
had to try some if I haven't. I can't remember if I have or not. I don't think I have. I had a Tim and Tool, but that's a whole different thing. I, that, I wasn't a fan of the PD Tang Tim and Tool stuff. Oh man, that was that was bad. But um, Tobamori's regular stuff, I'd like to try it because if their PETA stuff is this good, I'm wondering as an island distillery, man, they they probably do some pretty good stuff, even if it's not heavily is heavily peated. Does any of the does anyone know if the Tobamori stuff is um, if it's a uh, if it's got any pee at all to it. Hey, Lee, no, I did not add any water to the Leche 18, buddy. I did not. Um, for 130 to 135. Well, you got to send me a freaking link to that, Lee, because I might get myself another bottle someday uh, for this one. Tamar is saying the Benny's has the Leche 19 Cherry Cask Finished Limited, 1996 from 190. I have not tried that, my friend. I need to... Hopefully I get my hands on something like that at some point. That would be hella nice, <laughs> put it that way. No, Lee, I would, I would not uh, put water on this uh, to more. It's lightly peated, more salty characteristics than smoke. But with the light peat, I think I would actually like it. I think I really would. I'm going to have to try some of their regular stuff because I do love the Lechake stuff. is is absolutely amazing. This really good finish. It's not the longest in the world. I'd say it's a medium to long finish, more medium. It's got a decent mouth coat on it. The age is beautiful, though. I mean, you could taste the age in this sucker. I'm going to have to go with a 4 point. Four point something, I'm thinking. I mean, what kind of thing you know? It's got the age. It's not chill filtered. I doubt it's colored. I definitely don't sense it being colored. Um, Lee, uh, gee, is this uh, this this Lechega 18, I'm, I'm pretty sure, is natural color, right? I'd be surprised if it wasn't. Um, it's got the age. It's got the color issue. It's not chill filtered. And it's got a... 46.3 is decent ABV. Maybe I would prefer a 48 to 50. I'm thinking that might be um, that might be something that I might ding it on just for a little bit. So maybe a 4.5. If it was 50, 48 percent, that's the only thing I think that would make that a better dram. I have to say. So that tells you something. I mean, it's hard to find a, a flaw in this guy. I uh, love it. And it is that much better than the 10. I mean, the 10's good. Don't get me wrong. But the 10 is more of a 3.5 to 4 kind of a dram. This is a step above that by far. And to me, the big reason is the sherry love. I love some good sherry mixed with my peat. It is phenomenal when it's done correctly. Cannot say that enough. And this is not a very dry glass. If it was done with pheno sherry, which I don't think this is, it would be a lot drier and a lot, um, yeah, this is Oloroso. So, I mean, it's a, it's a really nice, uh, it's a really nice, well done deal. I mean, yeah, if it was dry, I would probably ding it for that. But uh, this is this is beautiful. And the finish is still going. All right, well, we've, we've, we've done that one to death. Let's move on to the next guy. <laughs> Let's see what they're saying here. Um, Lee G stuck at work. He's uh, kind of busy, but has to stop by and harass me a little bit. Not sure about the NCF and color on that one. It's definitely not chill filtered. I didn't figure that out. Uh, the, the coloring, though, for an 18, it looks legit. I don't suspect any coloring issues, and I, I, I would. I'm sh I'm sure that they wouldn't they wouldn't um, sabotage their own 18 year if, for just a color thing. That's, that's not Leche. If it was Dalmore, then I'd be like, yeah, it's probably colored. And I, I mean, Dalmore 18 is probably colored, but this stuff is not even close to that color. So I'm like, if you're going to bother coloring something, you're going to, you are going to color it like you would like the Dalmore or something like that. But uh, Lagna says Lee, Lee G isn't the Tobamori 10 about 120 below your usual <laughs> purchase price. Yeah. yeah, Lee G likes that high end stuff. He didn't play around with the Tobamori. <laughs> if it's not like at least 15, 18 years old, I don't think he's going to touch it. <laughs> Tom Meyer is like, you should think about taking the Amtrak to Chicago to do mini runs. Yeah, they have a, 
statistic selection and could carry on the bottles back and the train no problems. Ooh. Wow, man. Are their prices uh, pretty damn good compared to uh, a lot of us here in Maryland, Virginia, Pennsylvania, D.C. kind of thing? You're probably right because I do think the closer inland you get, uh, you know, California's got some low prices sometimes, but the shipping gets you. The uh, Chicago might actually not be a bad place to do a run. I might have to do that. That's not that's not a bad idea, Tom. I might have to time it with you. If you don't mind a, a tag along sometime, maybe we can uh, hit the uh, hit the bennies for a, a run, <laughs> maybe a couple of drams in the side or something. Uh, I would definitely make that a weekend trip and see. Okay, I'll check out their bottles and see it on the prices. I've got a price list from my local store here. If they beat those guys, I'll definitely probably have to take a little trip. It'll be fine. Um, my uh, brother-in-law and sister-in-law lives out in Chicago, too. So I might have to do a uh, hey, hey, uh, just to say hi if I get to go. Uh, but we'll see. I've got a nine-year-old daughter, so it might be interesting to see how I go about the logistics of it. But it might be worth a try. The train thing sounds intriguing. Liji says, let us have some cheap trams, not many, but some, yeah. His his idea of a treat tram is like the freaking, uh, um, like a LaFroy lore. <laughs> Tom R says, there are some great whiskey bars here. Yeah, I bet there are, man. I, I'll have to... Uh, if you're willing to show me around a little bit, and uh, if you got some time sometime, Tom, I definitely would take you up on that. That would be fun, uh, even if it's just for like a day or two. I, I would, I would be, uh, I, I would be humbled to uh, if you could uh, take the time to do it. Uh, I have done the Amtrak from Chicago to Rockville to visit my mom. Okay, uh, that's that's close enough by to. Uh, to do it yeah there's a major hub here in uh, if not dc up in baltimore figure something out i live out in savannah park which is near annapolis but i can i can logistically figure out something there like ness says uh, lee g your collection is incredible i always enjoy your post messages. yeah lee g has got he's the whiskey whisperer on uh, twitter now i've noticed he must have gotten the social media bug i guess he does have uh, some good pictures, man. That one latest one you put, Lee, of your carriages collection made my mouth just drop to the floor. I, I was like, I mean, it's hard enough for me to get the freaking, the newest one I've got eyes on already. That I'm not worried about. I've got the last year, the 2016. I've had the 2015. I don't have my own bottle yet, but that should be not too hard to find, hopefully. The 2014 was a bitch to find. I got lucky about that one in California. The 2013 Portwood, I do have a, a gracious sample of it from Mr. Lee, but um, to get my own bottle is going to be a pain. I can't even fathom what you had to go through to get the, um, let's see, that was 2013. So 2012, 2011, 2020, 2009, and 2008. I think I think that's the 2008 is the first uh, carriages year, if I'm not mistaken. You had to go through hell and hot water to get that, I'm thinking to your task i imagine man that's crazy and these are empties back there <laughs> i don't even have full bottles i could see i don't see how you guys do this whole full bottle thing man it's just if i get something i, I gotta i gotta drink it it's just too damn good and, and too glorious to, to just look at or ponder but it would be nice to have enough uh capital to have a, a bunch of uh of uh and then uh, unopened ones, that's for sure. The 08 and 12 had them. Yeah, I imagine that wasn't fun to deal with. Uh, I've had my own the Erdin uh, Ambesht from Ardbeg uh, in the Lord of the Isles, man. And the Sills bottles go for some crazy money. It's just it's just sad that people are willing to spend four or five hundred dollars on a freaking whiskey that was made like for one year. <laughs> I'm just like, wow. One light says, shit, I forgot how incredible the seventh edition is. I'm thinking I'm gonna have to grab another bottle. Tell us you spark my call and interest again. Well, I appreciate it, man. Uh yeah, Kohoma doesn't pay me anything. They don't give me anything for free. I had to buy all these, but uh uh it'd be nice if they threw a bone over the fence every once in a while. <laughs> that would be nice. Speaking of, let's get to uh before we uh, go crazy and have a complete train derailment, let's uh, get us a, a, a nibble and uh, 
try the soft trans cask. I'm really curious about this because I told him, Lee, about your uh, disheartened uh, experience with the uh, port cask. I mean, that's so sad. I, I, and, and I can see it. it I, I was told him earlier, Lee, that, that doing a port cask well with Pete is not easy to do. It's it's like a lost art. And I, I very rarely have ever remember having a port cask that did well. It's just not easy to pull off. I'm trying to think. Uh, the Lafroig does it uh, well with the, the, the. I'm sure I haven't touched that that uh, that care just uh, poor yet, but I'm sure that's gonna be great. The Bordier was awesome. That was that was fine. Um, Spring Meek was so so. Um, you didn't like that one. I'm trying to think of some other port experiences I've had that were kind of off. Um, that peated port with from Glendronic, that was kind of a weird deal, I have to say. Ali uh, G's asking about the uh, Cadalton. I found a deal actually on that. Let me look for you real fast. Hold on. Let me uh, sorry to eat in front of you guys, but I gotta cleanse the palate a little bit. Let me pull it up for you, Lee. Um, Let's see. I got to send in my stupid email, of course. Mm. I hate passwords. It's such a pain in the ass. I remember like 50,000 of them. <laughs> All right, let's do a uh, kill Dalton. Uh, I did get a decent price, I thought. Since this is a 2014, you cannot find this uh, at any store practically. I found it at the Green Welly um, stop in UK. And um, I don't know if they have any more, though. That is going to be the kicker. I don't think they had any more, but let's see, just to make sure. Um, all folders. Hold on one second. Well, you would think that this would be easy to find, but uh, let me try this one more time. Let's see, here we go. Oh, they sent me some advert for our begging Wartlock, of course. That's not what I'm looking for. Uh, where is it? 135 pounds and 34 for uh, shipping. It looks like. Just look up USD on that and I'll tell you what I had to go through. Um, but not a, you know, not, not crazy, not cheap, but not out of the, you know, from what it is, it's, it's a special bottle. Uh, that killed Dalton. It was a um, a charity bottle actually, where they were giving the monies earned to the uh, actual Scottish Gaelic people that worked on the island, and so um, it was for a good cause. I guess what happened was they sold a bunch, and then the people that that bought them, uh, like the Grin Willie stop, probably figured, well, we'll have a few here and there, and then we'll you know go back and. Um, sell them afterward hey everyone thanks for stopping by man sorry uh, i i've been kind of dragging on getting to this kill home but we'll, we'll do that really fast here but yeah it, it was really good uh it's gone now <laughs> it, it didn't last long so i should tell you something it's it's tasty and um i think that uh you would uh be be you know I don't know. You might think it's a little mild for an art bag. It's not as as strong tasting as some of their other ones. It's not as as assertive as an art bog or um, even like a uh, a kelpie or a dark hope. It's it's a little more delicate. It's it's. I'm not sure if they use older stuff. You might appreciate the age of it, maybe. Um, the older version of Kill Dalton was unpeated. I'd love to taste that, but it's from 1980. It's extremely expensive. There's no way in hell I'll probably ever find it. But um, that's the only art bag that's unpeated. I'm kind of afraid to even touch it because I hate the Kalila unpeated stuff. And I probably would be like, eh, not my cup of tea. But 
I give it a chance once. I give anything a chance once. Uh, Jason said something earlier. I caught my eye. One second, guys. Let me kind of scan up here for some comments. I know you're pretty much a Scotch guy, but do you think that you have given bourbon rye another whiskey a fair shake? Well, I tell you what. I grew up in Louisville, Kentucky, so I have had a lot of bourbon. I've had a lot of different types of bourbon. I could be probably a master of, of bourbon, but I just don't like corn-based whiskey. It's just not in my palate. I, I, I think it's it's funny because I have a sweet tooth. I love sweet stuff, but I cannot stand corn tasting whiskey. I even, I mean, I love the idea of moonshine, but any corn based moonshine, no way, no way in hell. It's not my thing. But rye, I do love. I do like rye. I have gotten to do some rye. I do like a Midsummer Night's Dram. Uh, I had an uh, Act 4 Scene 1. Really good stuff. I've had some, um, some uh, what was it, uh, Colonel E.H. Taylor bottled and bond. I think that might have been a, was that a bourbon? Was that a, I can't remember which one that was. That was actually good. If it was a bourbon, it was one of the better bourbons I've ever had. Um, the L.E.S.B. Four Roses, that was really good. That's a bourbon, I'm pretty sure. Uh, oh, my. I had some ryes too on oh, Amrit Rye. Uh, Amrit's an Indian uh, company, actually, of all things. They have a great Amrit, A M R U T, rye. I think it might be Fusion. I can't remember what the name of it is, but uh, look for Amrit Rye. It's, it's, it's a 4.0, 4.25 easy bottle. It's, it's, it's pretty good. Uh, I have had the Michter's, um, not the Toasted Barrel Rye, but I've had a Michter's in a. Um, a bar recently that was a good rye. I'm trying to think of, I think it was just a basic mixers. It wasn't anything super fancy. I think it was one of their higher uh, proofs, but it wasn't anything fancy. So uh, I did like that that basic high proof mixers uh, rye. I think I had that was good. Uh, Arbic 2320 something. Yeah, that's Tom. That's my probably my favorite scotch of all time. I do have a sample back here. We're going to do that at some point. But uh, guys, I, I better get to this call. <laughs> I'll never get done. <laughs> I can talk about scotch all night. And thanks later, everyone, if I missed saying goodnight to you. Uh, thanks for getting me hooked on Glen Scotia, my friend. I, I, I love that stuff. I love the double cast, the 15, and the Victoriana. All great Campbelltown uh, offerings. I love me some Campbelltown stuff, man. Um, what you see, I'm really liking port finished scotch right now. But, Tamontan 14 is my favorite so far, Loch Ness says. And Lee G agrees. Uh, that I'll have to. Did, hey, Lee, did you. Was that Tamontan 14? Was that one that you. Uh, that you. Um, let us in on on that one? Do you remember? Uh, we, we've. You've shared some Tamontans. You had a. I know a 12 single cast that was pretty good. I did the de decades, which is really good. Um, you did another, I think, at eighteen. That was really good. I'm trying to remember if we did a fourteen port, though. I don't know if we did. I don't think we did. I like to. I might have to find out to find that one. Because if the port's done right, I like it. But it's such a hard, uh, it's such a hard deal to to deal with there. Richie says, says Victoria on this currently. Yeah, it's it, uh, that's one I did recently, man. And that's 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 superb. It's a uh, fifteen. I might like it's the smidgen, smidgen better. I mean, barely, but uh, it's still damn good. It's kind of like trying to compare the Ardbeg Ugadal with the Ardbeg Cory Bracket. I guess it's they're both great. It's just you know depends on the mood kind of thing. Looks like Ardbeg is releasing another twenty something this time, a twenty two year old ex bourbon bottle. Ooh. That sounds intriguing because the peat with the smoke and the bourbon, that should work. There's no sherry involved, though. That makes me sad, but I would try it. <laughs> I'm sure that's going to be $500 easy. Uh, that's the sad thing about it. Whiskey Throttle, good to see you, my friend. How's Moose Jaw? <laughs> yeah, the collection is getting huge. I'm working on it. It's uh, It's got some ways to go, man. Of, uh, I've got too many empty spaces up there. <laughs> got to take care of that. The LCBO here in Ontario usually only carries mainstream products. We must sell on so many great bottles up here. Yeah, that's how Pennsylvania above me is, and Virginia below me seems to be. Thankfully, Maryland is a little more um, has more of a selection. 
thank God. And um, DC is another place that has a pretty good selection. But if it wasn't for DC and Maryland, man, uh, yeah, between Virginia and, and Pennsylvania, it'd be, it'd be hard to find some good stuff. You'd have, probably have to drive to freaking Saskatchewan or something. <laughs> I couldn't imagine driving up to see Mr. Uh, Whiskey Throttle up in Moose Job in Alberta. That would be that'd be a hell of a drive. Jesus Christ! <laughs> it would take it would take uh, I don't know, man. It takes like fourteen hours to drive to Chicago. I can't imagine how many hours it would be to go to Alberta. I'd be like at least a day and a half. I have a feeling. Hey, Daniel. Um, oh, they were talking about you, Whiskey Throttle. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, I don't know if I shared pours of tomorrow 14 with the group. I don't think you did, but uh, we might have to uh, cross that bridge. Uh, I'm trying to get Lee, uh, Mr. Lee G out here to visit me uh, late August um, on his vacation and uh, my vacation. And uh, we might do a little special show. We've got a couple ideas that we're going to do uh, locally here. He lives just a few hours away, so I'm sure I can coerce him with a bottle or two. And... Um, Maybe we can come up with a, you know three or four really good pours and do like a special two-hour fiesta or something. I <laughs> will call it something. Yeah, it's time for some IKEA shelving. I think you're right. Bobby says, "Why do all these people always insist on calling me and monopolizing my time during your show?" I don't know, man. You're in, you're you're in Dallas. You're a couple hours off. Nine o'clock, uh, nine uh, to ten. That's probably why. But uh, it's all it's all right. I know how it goes. Don't feel bad. <laughs> Hey, Malta, thanks for coming about, Swami. You missed all the good stuff, but I still have, I'm still talking the whole time. I still haven't touched this this uh, Kilhoman. Yes, you do, my friend. It's the Sauternes cast. Have you had the Sauternes yet, uh, Swami? I'm, I'm curious because uh, I've had Lockworm. Love it. It's probably my third favorite. Seneg, I love it. It's my fourth favorite. Red Wine Cast Matured, my first favorite so far. And the original Cast Strength, my second favorite. So this is number five. I want that PX. I'm coming for you. <laughs> I want that PX cast so bad, Swami. I'm drooling just thinking about it. But um, I saw this at the store the other day, and I thought, you know what? I've got to have it. I love some Sauternes cast stuff. I've had it before. Uh, Glamorange, Nectar Dwar kind of thing. So I figure, well, it's a little, a little darker than I expected it to be, I have to say. Uh, just did the Lecheg 18 earlier, Swami, and if it's not on your radar, put it on there, my friend. Went to the American, though. It's a little pricey. I'm not sure what that is Canadian. It's probably, like, closer to 200 But even if this was 200 bucks American, I would still say go for it. It's that good. I am a, a big fan of Lecheg 18. Great age statement, great age taste, balance with the sweetness, the savory, and all that. And you get the um, no chill filtering, no coloring, I don't believe. Uh, the only thing is the 46.3 ABV, but you know what? It's That's the worst thing you can say about it. It's, it's pretty damn good. But anyway, let's take a look and see. Oh, the soft turns cast. Yeah, this must be a, a newer deal. This is the this is the look of it. It's it's kind of it's greenish. It's not as green as that um, original cast strength, but it's... Um, it's uh, natural color, non-chill filtered, bottled in 2016, distilled in 2011. Do your math. <laughs> it's uh, it's a beautiful, uh, you know, presentation as always with Kilhoman. Thankfully, uh, they don't. Even though I mean, it's it's well done. They don't take away from focusing also on what's inside the bottle, you know. Springbank does a great job. They don't spend a lot of time on the, the presentation, but these guys actually spend it on both the craft of the make of the juice and the actual marketing, which I, you have to applaud them for it. They, they take the time to do both. So that's one thing I think Coleman has got a little bitty edge step on when it comes to that kind of thing. The only thing they're lacking is the age, and that'll come in the next five, 10 years. I think we'll all be talking about Coleman like, I mean, I know Swami and I are, have already been huge fans of them for a while, but just think of how big these guys are going to be. You know, if Ardbeg and Lafroig can't keep up with demand and they don't have the old age stuff, and these guys are smart enough to make a shitload of it and put that sucker away, let that barrel sit for 20 years, think of how damn good that's going to be. My 
goodness gracious. Now, I hate to say it, Swami, but Mr. Lee, uh, gee, my friend here, I don't know if he took off uh, or not, if he's still around, but he did do the port version of this and was not a fan. So you might want to keep that on your last to try uh, deal. It just came out recently, Swami, as the port um, cast matured version. He was not a fan. I do trust Mr. Lee G's uh, opinions on uh, taste and such. So just keep that in mind. Ooh. That Sauterne is, is definitely a... It's, it's it's definitely present. You can you can definitely get that 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 cask finished from the get go. <sighs> hmm. Let me uh, see if I got any information. I don't know if I have a lot. Is I think this is a newer um, a newer one. Let me see if there's any like uh, special information. Just you know, we know it's five years old. Um, you know, it's it's 50% it's ABV, so it's a, it's a nice ABV. It's perfect. Uh, 50 on the nose. Really nice color for it to be. Uh, wow, sorry, I'm going to break the bottle. It's really nice uh, color for it to be natural. It's it's really damn dark, which is, is good in my eyes. And uh, if it's natural, and uh, let's just see if we get... It's interesting, the first note I got, I'm just kind of trying to make sure that's what, what I get, because sometimes your mind plays tricks on you when you're getting this stuff. <laughs> the first two notes I get off the bat are like like a, um, a cranberry. And like sourdough bread, it's interesting. It's like... Uh, It's a tobacco too. That's wild. Maybe you get some oak, some uh, I don't know, some uh, woodiness too. But the 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 berries are really intense with that like savory doughiness, huh? It's not, I mean, you get, of course, the, the trademark Cajon and peat smoke is there. I think it's, I think it's well balanced. It's not like, it might not be in your, in your face as much as the Lot Gorn, but, uh, if you like a nice fruit balanced, savory and peat smoke, I, th I think you'll be on, on board with this guy. Does Cajon use the same shape bottle for all their stuff? Richie's asking. Yeah, pretty much across the board. Yeah, it's a, it's a nice uh, it's a nice looking bottle, man. I mean, it's uh, and they're all the same exact shape in the same font. They, what they do is they change the color, which I really love because I can look across the room and just by looking at the color of the box, I can tell you exactly if it's Saligo Bay, if it's Cool Point. If it's this, if it's that, I mean, there's and there's lots to choose from when it comes to Kilhome, and they have a shitload of offerings. I mean, that's one thing that's great about being in a younger distillery. If you have good core juice, you could throw that shit in a freaking you know dishwater, and it's still they find a way to bring out a whiskey out of it. Minus the port cask, you know, might be an issue, but. Uh, I mean, these guys know how to do it. It's 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 fantastic. I'm down with the nose. I'm down with the nose. Let's see, neat on the palate, and this is a, a usual uh, medium to heavy mouth coat. It, it's viscosity looks good. It's nice and oily. Hmm. I tell you what, it, it beats the hell out of the Glen Morangy de Noir. <laughs> I can tell you that right now. Wow. It is in your face. It's, oh, man. There's something about their peat smoke I just cannot get enough of. I mean, of course, Lefroig and, and, and Ardbeg 
you know, they fight with being around 44, I think, 45 parts per million on the phenol level. Does anyone know what Kilhoman's level is? It's got to be pretty high, man, because they are like they, – they can fight with these guys that have been around for years. I mean, I mean, these guys have been around for ages. We're talking 1815 on Ardbeg, 1815 uh, with uh, Lafroy. So – that's about the same exact damn time. I didn't even know that until now. Huh. I was just looking at the, the, some of the boxes, and it's 1815 on both sides. So these guys are so new, and these guys can hang with the big boys. I, I, I'm not I'm not joking. It's crazy. Thomas says, are you just nosing that glass or making love to you need another, to smoke soon? Yeah. I have to take up some... Uh, don't tell my wife I'll have to take up some smoking or some, some cigars or something. <laughs> it is that good, man. Uh, if you haven't had a Kahoman, you are doing yourself a disservice. It's sad. Uh, Swami says 35 to 40. So I mean, uh, 35 to 50. So it's exactly in the same realm of the big boys, the Arbex and Lafoyx. Um, and this has got to be, this is probably one of their higher PPMs, I'm thinking, because this is more oppressive than I think the um, the Seneg probably on par with the the top two uh, of my favorites the the red wine and the original cast drink excuse me um that is just insane Are you drinking anything tonight, Swami? I'm just curious if you've uh, if uh, Daniel's still around. Have you had anything tonight? I know you're more of a not so much a, a straight Scotch drinker, but I'm curious to see if you're having any uh, Canadian stuff that's interesting. Anybody else? Tell me what you're drinking tonight, and uh, like to see what you guys have because uh, it's hard enough to uh, keep track of what I'm into. Sometimes it's good to. Take a look overseas or over uh, the border. Uh, where are you from, sir? Nice to meet you. Oh, yeah. Bobby is a... Uh... Oh, take the week off for drinking. Oh, I hear you, man. It's good to do. Good to hydrate once in a blue moon. I should do it more often. Do you still get the sauterans over the pee? That is a good question. And I was contemplating that because, man, that Kilhoman... Peat smoke combination is so damn good. You don't want it to be gone. But let's have one more sip and see. The cask is there on the nose for sure. Let me see if it's as much on the palate. Give a little sip of uh, water on the side here. And for 50, it's not too hot to drink neat. It's actually pretty damn good the way it is. You do get the cask. It's on top. And the peat smoke is underneath on the bottom. It comes through more in the finish. It sits nicely on the end, which is what you expect. I'm wondering how they screwed up the port cast that um, Mr. Lee G um, had and dinged them on. I, I had to experience it for myself. I do have a sample of that. We'll, we'll, we'll go to that one um, another day. But... Um, this one, the way I see it, it's like if you took the the orangey nectar noir and you added some kick-ass peat smoke to it, and the peat was younger, like this, a five-year. I mean, wow. I wouldn't change, you know, really anything. Maybe give it a little more age, but you know. Wow. Finished though. I'm, I'm hoping it gets, it's better on my next set because on the finish, I'm not quite sure if I like that as much, but let's see. Um, oh, you're doing an Angel's Envy finish dry. That's Richie Z. That sounds good. I have to try some of the Angel's Envy. I heard someone told me recently I should try that uh, if I'm into rise. And I'll, I'll, what do you think of that one? Is that on your uh, one of your favorites or are you kind of like in the middle of the road? Or what do you think about that, Richie? Just curious. Risky Throttle says he opened the Muse Live today on his channel. Oh, cool. 
This the uh, compass box. I've heard mixed reviews about that. Um, Tom R recently, I think, tasted the, the Muse and liked it. My friend Lee G wasn't really that enthused by it. What was your take on it? Um, also, visit Whiskey Throttle's channel also on the side. And if you don't uh, come back and tell me, I'll, I'll take a look afterward and, and see what you thought of it because I am curious. Uh, thanks for stopping by, Wine, Wine Light. I appreciate it. Um, Oh, Slitcherania. Oh, that's a new five liter mania. Sorry, it's a little distant for me to read from this distance, but uh, yes, how is that Muse whiskey throttle? I love the Quindecimus. Yeah, I was napping when you did that. I'll watch it after Talix. Okay, just put a dram of the Pete Monster. Pete Monster is always good. That sounds like a great love the Pete. So, yeah, it, it's a good balance, I'd say, Jason. Uh, I'm not uh, missing the cask, I'm not missing the Pete. The smoke is there. It uh, it's got some really interesting, like ricey, like rice cakes. But it's it, it's got enough of the sweetness to balance out the savory notes with the peat smoke on the back. That I mean, I don't see how you could really bitch about it, other than maybe the age of it being younger. But some people love a young peat because it's more intense. It's more pow in your face. You know, and the cool thing about this is that it's not cast strength, so it's not going to knock you on your ass if you decide to have a few trams of it. But at the same time, it's not thin as hell on 40%, so you can drink it and feel like you're actually drinking something, you know? I mean, that's important, too. Thanks uh, so much uh, for stopping by there, Swami. I appreciate it. Uh, Five liters having a Bowmore 15 single sherry cast strength. Begin two nights. Oh, that's cool. Is that the darkest or is that a different version? I think it's a different version than the darkest. That sounds like it's a little better, actually. A single cask, uh, a single sherry cask deal it sounds really good. I might have to try to find me some of that. Is that an independent uh, five liter or is that a um, distillery bottle? Just curious. Did you buy only one bottle of Sartorians? I have a bottle which I had bought two, though. <laughs> yeah, I just bought one, man. It was 110 ish. And that's right on my threshold of, of what I'd like to spend on uh, something if I can help it. It's uh, a lot of these, I'm going to wish I had multiple ones. We'll put it that way. <laughs> they do have other ones there where I get mine. So that's the good thing. The only bad thing is they don't sell online. So you have to go and get it in Alcott City Mill our own. So that's the. Uh, the, the good thing about that, though, is I know when I go, they're probably going to have it because they give me like a monthly uh, review of their inventory so I can see exactly what they have before I take a trip out there. It's about a half hour drive, but I save like $20, $30 a bottle every time I go. So it really makes up for itself in the, in the end, I think. Uh, and since they don't go online, I don't have to worry about people like, you know, ninja buying stuff, stealth buying, that kind of stuff. I really like Young Pete on occasion. I mean, sometimes you're in a mood for something elegant like the Lago 116, the Audrey Hepburn of scotches. I love Audrey Hepburn. Oh my goodness, man. <laughs> I'm with you on that one. Other times you want something hung and brash. Yeah, this is this is definitely more on the brasher side. But the cool thing about Kilholman is that even though it is young and brash, it's still got some class to it. It's like... I'm trying to think of someone who was, who was young in their prime. They might have been brash, but they were classy, too. I'm trying to think who that would be. Maybe like, um, hmm. Think of some nice actresses. <laughs> I could think of a few, but I don't know. Some in their prime, though, when they're young. But with some class, Emma Stone. Yeah, she's 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 she definitely is is up there. Oh man, I'm trying to think. That's a tough one. I do enjoy Bone Water Distillery bottles, but independent bottles from where it's really where it's at. Yeah, and, and five liter. Let me know this. I, I'm I'm I'm. A, that's a sincere question. And I've got some Bone More bottlings over here, as you can see. The uh, in my beef with Bowmore, typically, and this is the 18, the 15, 
um, you know, most of the ones I've had is the thinness. It's, it's got like this thin mouth coat to it. It's, it's, it's got a decent flavor. It's got decent age, but it doesn't have the viscosity or the thickness that I'm looking for. Does the independent ones that you get, does it have any, um, better, oomphness to it than a uh, typical Bowmore would. I'm, I'm curious to see what, if you, if what you think, um, versus, you know, independent versus the distillery ones. Um, Lochness says that, uh, I have a bottle of log eight, but I haven't opened it yet. It's really good, man. Lochness, uh, the log eight is good for a breakfast ram. Keep it for like, if you're in a mood for like a breakfast toast, uh, Eggs, jelly, and jam, my friend. That's a good one, but it's it's a young pea. It's it's intense. Second edition, I don't know. I don't think it is. It's limited release. Let's see if it says uh, second if anything. It's forty six point three. If it tells you anything, it's uh, tobemorimont dot com. Uh, U.S. importer, international. Looks like. Uh, what is that? International Beverage Company Incorporated in Georgia. And uh, see if there's a year or anything on the bottle, maybe. Of course, it's 18. And uh, let's see. Small batch Spanish sherry wood finish is the type of finish on it. Let me see if this says anything. Uh, I'm not going to read it to you. I'm just looking at the... Uh, it's just got tasting notes, and it's got, um, you know, their marketing stuff in the beginning. But it doesn't say anything about addition or batch. It's just a la mole and... Um, 18 46.3 unchill filtered product of scotland nothing out of the ordinary that i see so hopefully i'll tell you what you're looking for i'm hoping we'll see about that let's see here um really oily the independence yep cast strength it's great okay five liter i'm gonna I might have to stay away from the distillery versions, and I think you got a good idea on that. And I'm going to go more towards the uh, really good independent bottling. And my favorites are Creative Whiskey Company, CWC. Um, I like the Alexander Murray guys. Um, not too big on ber berries. Um, I haven't really had – or uh, Battle Hill. I haven't had a good experience with those guys. Uh what are your favorite uh, independent bottlers, five liter, just out of curiosity? Let me know because uh, the only good experiences I've had are either um, Alexander Murray or um, I'm trying to think. Uh, CWC is my favorite creative whiskey company, but I'm trying to think of any other ones that I've tried that uh, stood out as being like, you know, really good. I'm looking back here to see if I see anybody else. Gordon McPhil's, that they've, been okay, I'd say. Um, I ha was not a fan of the classic cast Mortlock 11 I had, so that was kind of a downer. Um, it's hard to find a decent independent bottler, from my opinion, but maybe I've just been unlucky. Let's see. Loggate is so good. Moose says yes. Uh, big fan of the Glendronic 12. Me too, Loch Ness. Uh, having Spring Bank 10. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's a... Hey, Richard, thanks for joining us. Uh, Spring Bank 10, man, is awesome. It's one of my favorites. 75 bucks is a little steep for a 10-year-old, in my opinion. But is it worth it? It still is. It's just sad that they charge that much for a 10-year-old. But, you know, the 12 cast ring, it's like 100. But it is damn good. It would be on the front. It would be on the front if it's a second edition. I don't think it's – no, it just says uh, – it just says uh, – Aged uh, 18, wonderfully peated, limited edition, limited release, I'm sorry. And it's got the uh, thing there. And then this guy just uh, says, uh, you know, the typical single malt, uh, wonderfully peated, 18 years, same old 
gobbledygook, nothing that I see on second edition or anything. 1798. So it must be a, an older one, I guess. I don't know. Is this the first edition, possibly? Just, just curious. Um, Lotna says, Moose, uh, have, are you in Canada? He's in Colorado. Oh, man, let's go to Colorado. Uh, I was wondering if you had tried the Dog of 112. Yes, uh, Loch Ness. Uh, I'll let Moose answer. Oh, he has not, but he hopes to find the 12. I can tell you, um, Loch Ness, that I've had the 12. It's uh, right down here, actually. It's the 2016 version I've had. Uh, I'm sorry, the 20... Um, 17 version i've had 2018 i was supposed to get but they didn't have the newest version uh they do differ a little bit on the versions but they're all heavily peated they're all a little more floral than your typical lagavulin but they're all really good i've yet to hear anyone be disappointed with a lagavulin 12. uh it's 130 to 140. um I do think it's worth it for cast strength 12 year old whiskey. I think it is. I think it's worth it. I don't think you'd be disappointed. And I think that, uh, you know, you, you would, you, you would, you know, be okay. <laughs> um, sorry about that. Let's see. Let's go back to, uh, discontinued. Uh Oh, the 10 year 50% maybe the higher ABV, maybe that's what it is. I got a 10 back here, but I don't know what the ABV on it is. Uh, I can't really tell from back this far. Uh, maybe that's the difference. The 50% ABV is higher than what you would usually get. So it might be where he's coming from on that discontinued deal. The 25 year old distillery bottling of Balmore is nice, especially the Seagull label if you can find it. Okay. <laughs> yeah, uh, Balmore 25, though, is going to be pretty pricey, I have a feeling. Um, that's going to be the 18 was, was okay, but the 25, I have a feeling, is going to be right at that threshold where I'm kind of like, ah, is it worth it? I don't know. Uh, Jason says, likeness, the more drams I have, the more I like it. <laughs> worth it, yeah. He hopes to find the 12 moose says um, Richard uh, is asking Daniel if he's back home yet. Lightness says no spring bank here in Ontario. Too bad. I'd love to try some. Wow. That's so depressing, man. I can't believe they don't have any spring bank in Ontario. That's crazy. Um, hmm. How's the uh, online ordering Lightness in uh, Canada? Are, are you able to order anything? from uh, UK or United States or anywhere, or is it a pain? Uh, and if you order from, let's say you're in Ontario, if you try to order from like Alberta or British Columbia, do you have a problem? Um, surely there's a way for you to get some spring bank, I would think. Richard says, uh, cheers from Brawling Hot Los Angeles. Oh, thanks Richard, cheers. Uh, having some Kilhoma Sauternes cast matured here. I definitely recommend both these bottles. They were they were not uh, disappointing at all. This is definitely a 4.5, the Leche 18. This guy is is right up there too, man. It's 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 younger, but it still hangs. I'm thinking 4.25. I have to ding a little bit on the age and maybe some um, finish issues as far as maybe not as long of a finish as I want. I mean, let's try to this uh, Mm. It's a damn good palette, though. Mm. Sharp as attack, but not too sharp where you're like, oh, it's like right there. Man, that's damn good. I love that sock turns finish. Still hanging. Still hanging. I mean, it's, I'd say it's medium to long. I still think I'm going to say 4.25 on this. It needs more age. It needs a better finish. 4.5 on this. This guy is is hard to to really make better, other than even maybe more age and possibly um, I don't know. It wasn't dry at all. 
this one has a little more of a drier deal going on, I think, from the Sauternes cast. So that, um, I mean, I love the brininess at first, but when you have a lot of brininess, that brings that maritime saltiness that really brings the dryness too. So it's kind of like, ah. I'm not bitching though, <laughs> that's for sure. Let me go back up here to some comments. I'm sorry, I'm missing some. Um, Daniel's saying that, uh, yep, always more somewhere. Yeah, there's always ways to find things. Uh, Daniel's right on that deal. Richie says, Angel's Envy uh, finished dry is super sweet and delicious. That sounds good to me. I'll have to give me some of that. Um, that'll be on my to-do list on the side. What's that run, Richie? Um, where are you and what does that run you if you don't mind me asking? I'm just, I'm just curious. Bobby says, Loch Ness, the Campbell Towns in general and Spring Bing in particular are wonderful. Oily and aggressive and not everyday whiskey, but certainly in a place in the rotation. Yeah. If, if I had my trifecta for Campbell Town, just my own personal preference, Glen Scotia 15 would be one of the three right there. For Spring Bank, it would be the 12 cast strength, easy to find. And uh, about 100 bucks, not crazy expensive. The uh, Glen Scotia 15, same thing. It's about 80, 75, somewhere around there. Uh, finding it's not as easy, but it's well worth a look. And for the other last distillery, Glengyle, would be the uh, Kilcarran 12. If you have a Kilcarran 12, if you have the Glen Scotia 15, and you have a spring bank either 12 cast strength or 10 on your bar, you're set. I mean, that's that's enough Campbelltown to kick anybody's ass, I'd say. That, that's perfect. Um, and when it comes to the other ones, like Bunnahoven 12, you got to have it. Um, Ardbeg, I would uh, go for the Ugadal. Lafroig, I would go for the Lore. If it's too high, then the Quarter Cask. For the uh, Kilhomans, I would go for the Loch Gorn. It's uh, it's about it's under a hundred or about a hundred. It's, it's 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 about right there. Um, Bone Wars, I'm still trying to find that perfect thing. I think a fifth uh, five liter was one of something with it. Maybe the independent version might be where it's at. I'm gonna have to come back to that one. Because I have not been really all that into the distillery bottles of Baltimore, but you know, you never know. They're okay. The 15 Darkest is, is interesting enough, but uh, my favorite out of the ones I have, I have five of them over here, is the uh, Doris Moore. It's the, also known as the Tempest Overseas, but it's like 170 It's a higher price bottle. It's uh, it's good, but man, it's pricey. Um, Brooke Lottie, the Octomore 7.1, I, I wouldn't that would be my go-to on that. Um, I think on Island, that pretty much covers... Am I missing somebody in Island? Oh, Kalila, the 12. You can't really, you know, maybe the 18. I need to try that, uh, the peated version of 18. Hopefully that will be uh, a good one. Um, I'm not a fan of the unpeated Kalilas. Don't get me started on that. But I think that covers pretty much the... Uh, if I'm missing something on Island, let me know. Let me come back here. Uh, let's see. Wow. Thanks so much for the comments, guys. Um, I'll lay better cool down. <laughs> yeah, sorry, phone. Been dying a lot. Uh, I really like Eldefi. Okay, Eldefi. I had a recent Eldefi. What was that? I have a number of Bradley Retray bottlings. Okay. Signatory. That's one I have to try as a signatory. Okay. Um, Adelphi. I've had the Adelphi sample recently. It was a Winter Queen. Have you had the Adelphi Winter Queen? Man, that was a good bottle. That's not my wheelhouse as far as I think that was more of a um, a bourbon. Is that a bourbon? I think it was. Um, but it was good. It was. It was actually. It was actually really good. Surprisingly, uh, outside of what I usually would go for. Let's see. Uh, where are we at here? Have you tried the Mock the More 25? I had a Mock the More before, but it wasn't a 25. It was a little younger. I think it might have been a 12, and I don't think it was something I really got into. Um, not my uh, preference. 
as far as another extra fees make it impossible to bother trying to bring anything in that's a sad thing but if you order from another province like this like if you order from alberta or, or bc is it still not worth the uh, hassle i'm just curious moose says the shipping cost makes it crazy yeah let's, let's check signatory cast strength Ooh, that sounds good I uh, haven't had any Mark Namor order of bottles of 23 from mom the week they cut off shipping. Oh, that's so sad. I feel you there, Bobby. Go with the Whiskey Exchange, Bobby, is a good place. Also look at the Green Welly Stop. And um, I'm trying to think of some other ones. But the Green Welly Stop and the Whiskey Exchange were good uh, choices from what I saw. I'd say... It's worth another shot looking around, see if you have you know, something. Well, about Telex Live shows, it feels more like home oh, of my favorite lives. Oh, thanks a lot, Jason. That's that's cool of you to say. I appreciate it. Where do you get this Signatory 5 liter? Yeah, Signatory, they do have them here. Um, your more, I want to say, specialized scotch places, the ones that have the best um, inventory are going to have the Signatory. I've seen a lot of Signatory Kalilas. And I've seen um, some other ones as well. Uh, five liter got it from the UK. Okay, it's a eleven year old. My favorite will check today. Wow, seventy nine dollars. Okay, the Tory government puts so much tax on alcohol that it's practically I'm trying to import anything. Huh? That is so sad, man. I feel bad for you. I wonder if is it hard to get a PO box? I'm not sure if you have PO boxes in Canada. Or some like shipping depot in a different province where it'd be easier where you're not really shipping it across you're like getting it to where you can go and pick it up or something out of out of province uh, I'm trying to be creative here to try to think of a way that you could you know get something without paying an arm and a leg to get it whiskey throw I wish I could share some with your brother I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, Dan Masters of Malt, man. I can't believe they, they sold out to uh, – what's that big overarching company that they bought out, uh, that bought them out? They sold out to some overarching Tier 3, Tier 5 weird business that makes it where they can't sell the United States because they have some sort of, like, conflict of interest or some bullshit like that. I'm like, you got to be kidding me, guys. They had such a good thing going in America. I would have – I would, I personally would have bought a boatload of bottles from those guys, but they really blew it. So now the whiskey exchange, um, green Willie stop and some other guys are going to get my business instead. I mean, you know, it's, it's their loss. I mean, hopefully they'll, um, think twice later on down the road, but I don't know if there's any way to dig themselves out of the big hole they've already dug themselves in. Whiskey Thrall, uh, Sister Richard, that's all good. Uh, it's a thought that counts. I haven't had a oh, no more yet, but in tree forever. Um, yeah, I've only had one experience by those guys, and I, I wasn't down with it, but that doesn't say, you know, that all of them are are down. Totally agree, Tux is down to earth and the same. Daniel and Whiskey Throttle. Yeah, Daniel does have a good show, and... Uh, he does a lot of the uh, good uh, things I don't even touch, which is like the Canadian whiskeys. I'm sure he does some bourbons and some uh, Irish stuff and some stuff that I don't even I'm, – I'm pretty much focused on uh, scotch, preferably. Uh, right there with you on Glen Scotia 15, I go to Spring Bank. is the 16 cast strength, which I don't think you get any more. Oh, you got two bottles there, Bobby? I think you might want to part with one of those. <laughs> No, you cannot find a 16 cast strength. That's for sure. If it exists, I'm telling you, I'm a huge enough Springbank fan to tell you I'd be able to find it, and you cannot find that. So uh, I can see why you're guarding your two last bottles. But if you don't mind, maybe if I ever get out to Texas someday, I could convince you to pop one of those open. <laughs> we might have to have a little fun with the uh, – man, I can imagine how good a Springbank 16 cast strength would be. That would be something else. Richard says he loves, loves the Lafroy 10 cast strength. Yeah, it's, it is good. It's damn good. Five liter mania says the problem is the cost of independent bottling is really starting to go up. Yeah. Yeah, if, if, if one of these independent bottlers gets a really good following, like Signatory and Adelphi and my favorites being Creative Whiskey Society, man, those guys, 
I'm sorry, Creative Whiskey Company, they uh, can charge a boatload premium with some of their offerings because they're really rare. They're like 300 bottles and their cast strength of like Lagavulin or Holland Park, 25 even. It's funny because I was at the store the other day and my my friend uh, at the store was like, yeah, man, you, you know, you like the Heart on Park 25, right? I'm like, hell yeah, I do. It's, it's one of the best bottles I've ever had. He's like, you see that up there? That's a Creative Whiskey Company cast strength Holland Park 25. I'm like, yeah. He's like, that's even better. And it's not even, it's heck half the price, 275 for a bottle of it. And the 25 itself is like five, you know, four or $500 at least. I'm like, Ooh, you got a point there. I might have to, I might have to pick that one down. And then I only have like one of like 300 and something bottles of it. So it's definitely worth a try when you know a good uh, independent bottler. The leader says, uh, Problems caught. Oh yeah, we already got that. Uh, Jason says I'm subscribed. Need to check him out more. I saw Daniel probably. Uh, Five liter says, uh, "Yep, T ten cast strength kicks some serious but It's true." Richie says, "I'm sorry." Bobby says, "Richie, uh, it's been on my list to try for years. Not my wheelhouse. I think it's switching my stretching my palate. Yeah, it's good to stretch your palate when you get a chance because you never know. Like I didn't think I would ever in a million years like anything from." Lowlands or the delicate Highland area. The Dalwini 2015 surprised me. I was like, you know what? It's not something I would really seek out per se, but if I had it, someone just like, here, taste this. I thought it was actually pretty good, <laughs> I have to say. Um, so you never know. You, you, just because you love really the, the crazy high-end cherry bombs or the crazy high-end smoky, intense flavored peaty stuff, don't be afraid to try some of the, you know, your Glen Morangy Lasantas or your Dalwini 15s, your Bobbler at 99s. That's a damn good bottle. I love the Bobbler, uh, the Bobbler 99. Um, the Lawnmower 16, the Abelauer Abana is a great cherry bomb. Um, man, go on and on. You know what I mean, though. I mean, it's it's really good. The actual store share with the staff. Ooh. InBev bought my, yeah, InBev, that's the one that, that really kicked the, kicked the craziness out of us. I got to believe some attorney didn't catch on to the whole tier distribution. Yeah, I would think so because they had to lose a lot of money, I think, with the uh, InBev Masters of Mall buyout thing. Oh, if we hook up at some point, I'm sure one of those bottles will get open. Yeah, I'll have to figure out a way to transport some stuff somehow to uh, Texas. That would be fun. Did I miss the Kilhoma score? Oh, um, this was a 4.5 easy. This was more of a 4.25. Really close. The age is what needs to happen with the Kilhomans, which will happen in time. That's the only thing I could really ding it on, um, other than maybe the finish not being as long as I wanted. A little drier on this side, uh, I'd say. So 4.25, 4.5 on Lechegg, I'd say. Let's see. Uh... Oh, Richie gave it to him. Thanks, man. Uh, Daniel really enjoyed your last... Uh... Live from Moose Jaw in the streets talking to locals. That'd be fun. I'd, I'd, I'd mess that one too. I'll have to check him out. I cut your shows a few times and never had for you ride. Oh. What's your favorite long row? Oh, a good question, man. Uh, Richard, um, sadly, I've had a Hazelburn, a Barlow, not nine year up there. I've had a, a definitely a good range of spring days. I have yet to try long rows. So if I had to take a guess, I know they have an aged long row peated. That would probably be my favorite. They also have what I've heard the long row red. And if I had to take a guess, that's probably a sherry long row peated which would also be really good if it's done well. It might be missing the age, though. But I love the spring bank. Uh, the hazel burn, I'm kind of like, eh, I'm not sure if I'm into their not peated at all stuff. Spring bank's good. It's got that Dunnage Warehouse leathery goodness. And a long row has got it. I mean, it's the most peated, so I'm thinking that's going to be right up my alley. I've got to get, you know, 
I got to get on board with some long run and see, you know, I'll definitely do a review when I get my hands on some. They do have a few bottles up at my favorite place and I'll uh, definitely give a shout out when I get to try some. He says, try some long run with 13 Malbec. Ooh, that's particular. I'll try to find it. If I can't find it, I'll find the best possible thing I can find. And uh, that's not, you know, crazy money and uh, go up there. Double 15 is my usual order at the on Rolls Club in LAX, even though it's hot set my usual palate. It's best whiskey they have. Yeah, see, I mean, isn't it funny, surprising sometimes you find a whiskey that's not something you would even think about even touching, but you try it and you're kind of like, I actually see why people like this, actually, after all, you know? Um, Moose says, uh, your shirt is making you want to grab a Leche 10 and play some Contra. <laughs> there you go. That's the perfect combination, man. Is Contra up, down, up, down, left, right, left, right, BA start, if I remember right? Up, up, down, down, left. Yeah, up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, BA start. <laughs> the, that's the cheat code for like 30 men or some crazy thing. I remember that. I'll never forget that as long as I love Contra is where it's at, man. It's good to see another gamer. <laughs> Oh, that's funny. Uh, long or red are wine cast mature and have age statements. I like that long or red. I have a feeling that's probably going to be my thing because I love that that Kahoma red wine cast matured. If it's anything like that, I think I'll be definitely down. We need to try some. Yeah, I'm definitely going to get my hands on that. Daniel is just kidding. I have a few bikes, sport bikes mostly. I talk about motorcycles. Yeah. I don't care who you are. That's funny. <laughs> Swami says Long Row 18 is a bomb. Okay. Long Row 18. I'll have to keep, I'll have to keep that in mind. Because I, I, I'm torn because I love a good young Pete with some really good either sherry or cast maturation. But I also really, really love a good aged peated or smoked or sherry or all combined like this guy is whiskey it's like wow man it's hard to pick because it depends on the mood i can go for either bottle either either pour they're both great in their own you know way it just depends on what you're in the mood for if you're feeling more classy and you're wanting to sit back and really sip sip and just you know lay back and relax or if you want to kick it and you want some you know slam that powerful flavor this is really good too so there you go my friends jason says i'm a cruiser and a touring guy but love all bikes when does all that matters yeah i'm not a bike rider but i love uh, if, if i had my preference i would love a nice pontoon a party barn uh, a party uh, boat and just be cruising around with any bottle you see back here or maybe like five <laughs> and just sipping in in twilight like right at sunset just sipping and just cruising down the river man that would be that would be ideal thanks for the uh thumbs up guys give me a thumbs up if you don't mind before you go i appreciate uh all the viewers and uh, if you haven't subscribed already please do uh, i love having fun with you guys every uh, thursday night and i try to do them some surprise shows here and there when i get a chance it's not easy but uh i do what i can Maybe Saturday during the day, I'll just pop up in the middle of nowhere and surprise you guys. <laughs> I said, I will do wheelies. <laughs> yeah. While you do wheelies, I guess. Yep. I like how you usually do two bottles per show. Yeah, I try to. I try to. Sometimes I even do three. Um, it's just hard if I'm really. I mean, these two are so intense and so good that I couldn't even think about doing a third with these two because they're that they're that good um and uh i do have a lot of good samples i'll give you a, a quick preview we got a, a canivy uh it's a uh, a really specialized bottle it's hard to find 23 year uh deal that'll be fun dallas do it's a uh an ancient like gone distillery lost distillery gordon mcphail uh, that should be a really fun one. A specialized Tandu. Um, I can't even see the name of that dram. It's a double, 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 
W L. <laughs> I can't pronounce it, Dran, from Tandu. That's a special one from my friend, uh, Generously Paul. That'll be a fun deal. Escapa from my friend Scott. Um, some really just nice off-the-wall things. Uh, uh, Blair Athol, uh 12 year from the Foreign Fauna. We'll take a look at that one. That's from uh, Paul as well. And uh, just some really, really, really nice across the board. Uh, some good Lafroy carriages of uh, the port uh, 113. The uh, newest one, the uh, Fino Cast 2018. And also another one. Uh, I'm trying to remember what it was. I can't remember, but they're all good. <laughs> It's hard to find a, a bad Lafroy carriage, I'll tell you that. Um, but it does happen. You never know. Just like that Cajon and Port Wine, man. I'm not looking forward to that sample right now, but hopefully it'll uh, not disappoint me as much as it did uh, Mr. Lee, but we'll see. Well, thanks, guys, uh, for sticking by me, and I appreciate it. We went way over what I thought we would. But uh, it's, you know, time flies when you're having fun. Slanchava. So